straight out the gate. This is our story, we're scripting. Our film, our glorious vision. Our sound, our score that is written. In this sport, this division. My, my, how the tournament's risen. Hey, yo, I'ma lay my tracks down on that freight train. Tearing through the sky in the clouds. I said, sky high, sky high, yeah. Hey, 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 Welcome to the top of my life. Sky high, sky high, yeah. Welcome to the top of my life. up the pre-season block in Australia with all my strength training from there. Kicked off the first race of the season in New Zealand for the Oceania title. That was the first Olympic qualifier of the year. Got some valuable points. I went to the States and went on the Chula Vista Olympic Training Centre track. That's been amazing these last few years. They've had access for the foreigners to be able to go there. They've got the Beijing replica track, then they've got the Rio replica track there. And yeah, it's pretty crucial to just to be able to get that track time. The high performance BMX team and myself, we all travelled down to South America. We did a bit of the South America tour. First stop down at Colombia and basically just tested the World Championships track. I think it was good to get the nerves out of the way early before the World Championships, which will be the last Olympic qualifier of the year. From there flew to Rio de Janeiro for the second Olympic test event where a lot of changes were made to the track. Probably about 80% of the track was changed. The pinnacle of BMX is the Olympic Games and definitely that track has, has stepped up so much and it's allowing the athletes to go really fast. That's what we want to do. We want to go as fast as possible. There's a few things that I wanted to do. I wanted to jump the triple into the first corner and test out some gearings and lines. Wade wanted us to maximise our time on the track and do a bit of a rehearsal of the Olympics. So we did our full lap efforts, our time trial runs, uh, a lot of mental imagery. Imagining the tens of thousands of people lining the tracks of the, the Olympic Stadium and piecing together some full lap efforts when not so much pressure's on me. While we were there, we checked out the beaches. We stayed down at Baradajuka, which is where the Olympic Village is, and it's really nice down there along the beach, so we had our acai bowls and coconuts. Tourist mode, we went up the Sugarloaf Mountain and looked over all of Brazil. Did all the things that when we come back for the Olympic Games, we won't have time to do. I'm glad to walk away from that second test event, and then now we're here in Argentina. After winning the race today and looking back overall, I think I was actually kind of quite calm. All those hours you put in, like so much time goes into it's a 40 second lap, but you work for hours and hours on tenths of a second down the ramp and hundreds of a second at a finish line for a time trial. Just to, to be able to sit back and let the day play out. If a dog runs onto the track, the dog runs onto the track. There's that performer inside that ever since I started racing, you know, I love winning and I love that feeling of getting up on that start gate and that, that feeling when you cross that finish line. My goal was to just let that performer out and ride with my heart and yeah, I chased that win the whole way around. One of the most challenging things for an athlete is to, to be really honest with yourself and just sort of say to yourself, you know, have I put the work in? Have I done everything? You know, what's my strengths? What's my weaknesses? What's, what are my competitors doing? Like, why did I lose that race? Or why did I win that race? I sat back at the end of last year and I knew that I, I didn't really let myself excel the entire year. I didn't have to search externally. I knew that everything was inside myself and just to kind of, to pull it out. Being aware of of yourself and as an athlete and using all of the past events to, to draw upon for, for the next one. Sometimes 
Some strategy will work mentally or physically and another race it won't work. You know, I need a little bit more music or I need a little bit more like chill time or I need to get more excited or, you know, asking my coach, like, slap me around, I need to get angry. It's kind of being flexible but having that bag of goodies to, to draw upon. What worked here today is different for the next World Cup in Manchester, which is tight, technical, pinned up, indoors, like, yeah, quite a drastic difference. For me, I love coming to Manchester. I've won the last two years here and I've had my grandma who's come down as well. This is the first time my dad's come. We just started off riding around a dirt track. We didn't realise it would be an Olympic sport one day. Her brother Sam got into it first and then she said, yeah, I want to ride. And then I said, I'll ride too. And it was really Team Buchanan riding wherever we could in Australia. I'm a lot like my dad. My dad's in IT. And from schoolwork to riding, I've always been quite analytical. Whenever I get to a track, I like to walk it and see where the white lines are and see how much room we've got to move. All the visuals and feeling like you've already been in that, in that spot before can be pretty powerful come, come racing and no matter what happens, I can adapt in that split second when it's all autopilot and you're reacting off instinct in that final. The way she approaches the analytical way of breaking down that track, she's just at a real high professional level that is just amazing. When I'm on the gate, I always visualise all my favourite people and all my supporters and my family, my French Bulldogs, my gym coach Julian Jones, everyone sitting in one room watching that TV and watching me race. Usually the dogs are asleep until I start jumping up and down, the final's happening. You feel that you want to be there, support her and just a real adrenaline rush even though you're on the other side of the world. She's the complete package from Sponsor's Dream. We always said to her, give back to the sport. We didn't expect it to be this early and, and to put some of her personal money back into it, uh, as well as Sponsor's money, is like, that is the thing that stands out for me. Thank you, this is my number one fan. It's M-I-C action. Got no skin, so kids stop rapping. Came to take over, came to drop. Microphone action, too hot to stop. For me, coming up for this final, I won out of one before. Last year, I've won out of five. And this year, I was out of three. I think this perspective sitting on the start gate, sometimes it can be so daunting and you've really just got to stay in the moment. For me, when I sit on the start gate, I like to draw motivation and draw energy from different things in the crowd. I really like to just sit, breathe, soak up the atmosphere, but then I like to switch it all off. This is basically what I picture in that final moment. No one's in the stands, no one's on the gate next to me, and I'm by myself just ready to let the performer come out and ready to just breathe and let it happen.